Hi, it's Emma Louise Hamilton here from the Amazon Dream. I recently asked in the Amazon FBA Dream Facebook group if any of the members use custom SKUs in their business. The majority didn't as they were unaware of the benefits that it can bring to their business. After touching on some of the pros of custom SKUs in this post, almost 30 people requested this very video. Smash the thumbs up button for pulling through and delivering this highly requested video. A SKU stands for Stock Keeping Unit and it is assigned to each product in your inventory. Amazon automatically generates a stock keeping unit, however, you can actually create a custom SKU. SKUs can help with inventory management. They can also identify information that may be hard to access when your products are in the Amazon Fulfillment Center. In this video, I will be delving into the information to include within a custom SKU. I will also be going into how SKUs can save you time and money. So let's head over to ScreenShare. I'm going to go through the exact steps I take when creating my custom SKUs, and it all starts with finding a product lead. I have found this item that is selling for £5 on Tesco. I have found the corresponding listing on Amazon, so I will input the buy price of £5 into my calculator. I then take note of the break even price, which is £10 and 4 pence, and then I copy the ASIN. I paste the ASIN into Amazon Seller Central and this page displays. I input my sale price and also select the condition of the item. This is where most sellers click the save and finish button. If you do this, Amazon will generate a random SKU for the item, which gives you no insight whatsoever about the product. So let's get cracking with the custom SKU. Ordinarily, I would have my custom SKUs all ready to copy and paste as I list my items. For today, we are going to be doing it inside the portal. The first part of my custom SKU is where I purchased the item from, which in this case is Tesco. I personally use an abbreviation of the store, so in this case it will be TC. If you are doing FBA fulfillment by Amazon, then your customer will not see your SKU. However, if you are doing FBM fulfillment by merchant, then your customer will see your SKU. Therefore, just be mindful of the information that you do put in the SKU and the manner in which it's formatted. For example, I wouldn't recommend putting the full name of your retailer such as Tesco as your customer may get a funny feeling. Next, I input the buy price which really helps with post sales analysis. Then follows the break even price which was £10 and 4 pence. The break even price really helps if I need to further reprice my item once in the fulfillment centre. This is especially useful if I want to quickly recoup my investment. This could happen for various reasons, one being if an item is about to go out of date. Next we have the date the item was sent into the Amazon Fulfillment Center. This helps me know how long the item has been in the warehouse and when it comes to my post sales analysis this data is really helpful in identifying which items have sold quickly and which have been slow movers. Also if Amazon ever requests a receipt for an item I can quickly identify the month that I purchased this item and quickly locate the receipt to send to Amazon. Next, if the item is a perishable item, has a use by date or best before date, I would then enter the date the item expires. To be eligible for FBA, food and drink must have a minimum shelf life of more than 90 days when you send it into Amazon. Items within 50 days of the expiry date will actually be disposed of if you try and send them into the warehouse. For non-food items, the expiry date must have more than 18 months when sending into Amazon. Next, I assign a number to each product and each month I start from zero. This helps me to identify how many lines I have sent into Amazon each month and also prevents any duplication of SKUs. Then I input the method used to source the product. So with this item, it is OA for online arbitrage. If I found it through retail arbitrage, I will put RA. If I found the item through a sourcing software like Source Mogul, I will put SM. And likewise, if I found the item through a sourcing service like online arbitrage deals, I will put OAD and so forth. And again, this helps feed into my post sales analysis as I am able to identify the method that is serving me the best and finding me the most profitable items. As you can see, custom SKUs, if used effectively, can be a great asset to your business. 
Will you now be using custom SKUs in your business? Do let me know down below in the comment section. In the next video, I will delve into how custom SKUs can help with post analysis sales and how they can help you to identify the best products to reorder. To get notified of that video, click the notification bell and also click my face to subscribe. Do watch some of my other videos linked here if you have enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care for now. Bye.